Hello, it is Friday today and we're off out for a little walk at the moment. We don't have a gig till much later and we're done with rehearsing now for the rest of our trip here in Lorient. So we are off to a submarine museum this morning, but it's a fair trek. So that's where we're going right now. The Invisible Boyfriend's having a very interesting conversation about chords with Dan and I can tell he's engrossed because there's so many of these concrete posts and he hasn't got excited about them. Hey, look over there. Boats. What is that? I'm having to look on the zoom because I can't tell with my naked eye. I was just filming that over there then and I thought I was like standing right in front of a parked car and then as I was filming and staring at the zoom image on the monitor I became aware out of my peripheral vision of movement in that parked car so I was right in front of it and they were obviously somebody in there watching me. <laughs> You'd start to lose your inhibition vlogging in public after a while. I was even doing it backstage last night and I could see heads turning. Oh well, whatever. The invisible boyfriend has come out of his reverie and he's pointed out some inverted buttresses made out of concrete over there. He was impressed by that. I think they've gone back to talking about chords again now though. Oh look at this art here, that's amazing. But look, if you zoom right in, see what it's made of. Look at that! It's all little photographs. I think that's really clever. This is a blast door, apparently. So look how thick that is, that's monstrously thick. Hang on, let's just give you a bit of reference. I'll stand against it. Right, here's me. <laughs> it's my width of my arm. Yeah, it's that big. God, look at those stairs up there. I think I'd feel a little bit of vertigo going up those because they're see-through. Here's another one of those pictures. Les visages de Lorient. Let's go in to the moustache. Well, we've popped in and there was a really nice lady behind the desk and she explained that they were full at the moment but if we come back at 12 o'clock we'll be able to go in and it takes an hour apparently and I asked her if I could take photos and film and she said yes. Managed to successfully do that in French so I'm feeling extremely pleased with myself. <laughs> Small goals, you know. Yay! We're going to go and have a little mooch and possibly get a coffee and then go in. Presuming that's where they would have been launched. More blast doors. Well, it's, already, it's already covered with chicken wire there, so presumably. Yeah, they must be spraying it. I see the thickness. I can't get in to show you, but it's big. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Here we have some gantry cranes for the crane enthusiasts among you. There's that submarine we passed from the other side. Are we going in there later? Yeah, yeah, Woohoo! <laughs> I'm going through another archway here. Oh, I don't know if you're actually quite an archway, but it's quite extraordinary. I wonder what this was for. What's that over there? Is it made of fiberglass? Yes. I'll tell, I'm just going to stick the camera over the top and see. Hmm. I don't know. Part of the boat, I suppose, isn't it? Must be. Blimey, what's falling down? Well, it's not a cliff. Oh, I guess it's just old and maybe a bit dodge. Let's keep away from the edges then. Ah, oh, these things here. We just saw those being made by some gentlemen in a big hangar. I didn't film them because it sort of seemed a bit rude to just randomly film people working. I'm at the other end here. As you can see, I came through there and walked along. And you can see, yeah, the building is crumbling. They've put some netting on this one to catch the bits as they've fallen. I've come across this huge slab here and uh, the boyfriend was telling me with great excitement that you can see it's been sawn through, right through the reinforcements and everything here. That must have taken some power. <laughs> Oh dear, looks like that building's succumbed to fire. What a state. All buckled and burned. 
Look at that all melted. It's horrible, but I am fascinated to see how it's ended up. I'm getting left behind. Right, I'm going through there, which is where boyfriend and Dan have gone. There's Pinchy the crab up there. That's quite magnificent. Hello boys, I finally caught up. Yeah, you and your vlog lad. Have you seen the crab? I, I have. Down, particularly how tied. <laughs> got washed up and then to get it down. We've got about half an hour left until we can get into the museum. So we're going to see if we can squeeze that coffee in now. So these would have been lock gates here to keep the water level up. Where the wall's crumbling there, you can see all the reinforcing steel there. We've got an old mine here from World War II, the spiky bits removed for safety. There's another one and a torpedo. Uh, no, doesn't move. Just come into a bar, grabbing a quick coffee. The invisible boyfriend, in spite of having factor 45 sunblock on and a hat, has just managed to burn his head. Well, Dan, I think you're going to get your wish. Is that strong coffee? <laughs> <laughs> strong, is it? Here wow. it is. Just come in a glass. <laughs> oh, that's strong. We're going to be going around that submarine in about 12 minutes. We won't need the full hour. <laughs> It's so strong, I've resorted to getting some sugar cubes from the bar. I never, ever, ever have sugar in coffee, but it's really strong. I can't drink it, and we've got to go in six minutes. Oh, I can feel that coffee zinging through my body now as I head back towards the museum. I don't normally have caffeine much. I tend to have it in Coke, but normally to in coffee I go for decaf options, but I don't think there was one. <sighs> You know that lock that we were looking at, where there was could be a submarine from the ocean? Well, they access it from this point and then they can get shunted along this way, as represented by this model here, into the different bays that I filmed outside. So that's how that works. When you first come in, there's a visual display and some seats here, so you can learn the history of these docks here. Come into the next part now, and there's a another visual display here explaining the sort of evolution of the technology of submarines modelled by the lovely Daniel here we've got some batteries this cutaway section I think might be showing the voltaic pile thing we're just wondering if this is a toilet <laughs> I'd say it looks like one wouldn't you it says Bulan so maybe it's for doing good <laughs> making me feel a bit dizzy watching this here. It's uh, the whole wall of this little corridor we're in. Let's move it up and down. Whoa. Here's the periscope and I had a little peep through wondering if we'd see what's out there right today. They've actually got a little black and white slideshow of what they might have seen, you know, pictures from the time so it's a little bit spooky to look through it. Gives you a feeling as if you were really there at the time and you've gone back in time. Ah, oh, I've gone into a much bigger space now. Another film is being projected there and there are lots of people sitting in benches, absorbed. I'm going to have a little look down here, see what I can see. Ah, I didn't film it but I saw a projector earlier. And I wondered why there was a projector in the submarine, but it looks as if they sat and watched films together. 
Christmas celebrations on board a submarine. Now that's different. I like that uh, suspended animation shot there of somebody diving off the submarine for a nice swim. <laughs> presume that was recreation anyway. This is a like a torpedo launching tube. So I think it's a bit like a cannon but for a torpedo. Let's stop and have a little look at the film for a bit, I think. I'm going to sit in one of these benches here. This is a little bit spooky, this is. Oh! We've gone back in time. Look, the Nazi era. We're going to head out now and go and look at the submarine itself. We've come for our audio guides here. These are the languages that are available. My thingy there. Apparently it works automatically in the right places, I think. The nice lady sorted us out with our English version. Dan's kitted out already. Is it working yet? Mm. You're yeah. missing it. Oh no! I've got some kind of submarine-y sound effect noises at the moment. But apparently I missed the bit of spiel, Dan tells me. I'm just going up the steps now. In through the flappy bits. In this area that I'm in now, this would be their communal sort of socialising space when they weren't in war activities and they'd have their film projections here and maybe a meal together. But apparently when people were wandering in and out, it would put the ship off balance and the people in charge of the balance would have to make adjustments all the time to compensate for it. I'm assuming that's where the torpedoes got shot out from. Horrible, really. Torpedo launch control. There are some bunks here. You can see where the table would have been folded up. I presume this is where they had that Christmas meal that I showed you a photograph of. War bunks. The audio seems to be triggered automatically when you go into the right section very convenient. This is the um, captain's place. I think that might be the safe there. It's a chart table. That's where the officers set their meals. This is the, the wagon here and that's where the rest of the officers slept. Quite a few crammed into a very small space there. But it looks okay, doesn't it? It's wide enough. The captain's one, he gets his own room. Ah, oh, and there's his little wash station there. I'm assuming that's the fridge. I'm not sure. I think they said something about a butler's bit. I can't quite imagine a butler <laughs> in a submarine, but perhaps a butler's like, I don't know, maybe he prepares the food or something. This is the operations room. Six people work here with the captain. This is the plotting table. This is the periscope. Radar. Sonars. Echo sounder. Torpedo launch control. So here's the toilet. Apparently you could only use them at a specific depth, otherwise you had to hold on. <laughs> Wait, you couldn't come out apparently because of the compression issue. Here's the kitchen. So for the first, uh, I can't remember how many days, eight days maybe, um, they had fresh food to eat. But after that, for the next 14 days they'd have to have pre-packaged meals. And then that just kept cycling round and round then. Next part. This is the propulsion room. More bunks in this area here. Bit of a washing area. They had a coffee machine. They just grew beards apparently because there just wasn't enough water to spare for shaving. Well, we've just come out of there now. The price was 8 50 for one adult admission. It was definitely worth it. We enjoyed ourselves. We could have stayed there longer, but we need to get to the canteen in time for lunch, which is where we're going to go now. I'm going to end this vlog here and then start another one in a bit later on today because I'm trying to keep the vlogs a bit shorter. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give the video a like if you liked it.
<laughs> Invisible boyfriend's just getting his shots, so I'm moving quick. Don't forget to give the video a like if you liked it, because it really helps the channel to grow. Comment down your thoughts below. If you haven't subscribed and you want to catch the next vlog when it comes out to see what else we got up to today here in Lorient, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!